I'm Luke Seals. I'm a student from Berea Community School, the school that I've gone to for the entirety of my academic career and my father before me. And I cannot express enough the value of what this school has given me, the personal relationships that I've formed with teachers, the preparation for challenges that I'm gonna face later in my life. I really could not have asked for anything better. This year is the 50 year anniversary of the establishment of the school. And for the occasion, I spent the year putting together a video capturing our school's spirit and reflecting on the last 50 years of history contained within its walls. Then something happened. Something that none of us expected, the COVID-19 pandemic. School's been out for well over a month now and I've been working on all my assignments online from here at home, just waiting out the storm. But in the meantime, I think it gives us a great opportunity to look back on this year and all the years that have come before it, and just remember how much it all means to all of us. Anyway, let's go check in with Mr. Blankenship. I heard he was giving a lecture or something on Berea Community. Maybe we could sneak in. All the changes that Shh. occur in Triad made this place better. We still keep the core values, that continuity, right? The changes to the building have brought along betterment for the school itself, but still that sense of close-knit community, the good faculty, they all have the same outcome, right? Crafting the next generation of citizens and leaders for tomorrow. And I'm, I'm sorry. You're interrupting me, go! I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 Get going then. <laughs> Bye. Bye. dance is going on right now. Let's take a look.
Wow, that was really cool. Yeah, it really was. Uh, I think the football game's going on right about now. You want to go check that out? Yeah, sure. Let's awesome. do it. Can't you just feel the spirit? See why I love Berea so much? So, now we get on to the interesting part of the video. In case you didn't know, Berea Community actually wasn't the first high school in Berea. That title goes to Berea High School, or as it was known around town, Fruit Jar High. The school earned its nickname after an incident during a town meeting, in which Robert Lamb threw a fruit jar vase at the head of W.G. Wells after some disagreement uh, involving the viability of the school. Lamb was later arrested for striking with the intent to kill. <laughs> Needless to say, the story became a bit of an old town legend, and the name stuck. And it's easy to see why. The Fruit Jar is a pretty good name. You could even use it for like a, I don't know, a YouTube channel, or an Instagram account, something like that. That'd be pretty cool. I'm just saying, uh, I would, I'd follow them. If that existed. <laughs> the school was established in 1926 with a mere 52 students, but by 1969, those 52 students had grown to about 400, and in order to accommodate for the growing student body, a new school would have to be built. A new school with some questionable architectural decisions. Berea Community High School. It was a strange school, even for its time. It was an open school, meaning that there were no walls. The rooms were only separated by bookshelves, and as you would imagine, it could get pretty loud. This was part of an architectural movement in the 60s, which sought to innovate and push the boundaries of what a school could look like. In the 1990s, the decision was made to build walls in between the classrooms, which unfortunately takes away from a lot of that individuality that made Berea so interesting in the first place, but admittedly, it's a much better learning environment now. There have been other changes made to the school. Uh, a new gym was added onto the front, and uh, additional classrooms have been built. But honestly, I think that we still have that same pirate pride that was present 50 years ago when the school opened. Or even 94 years ago, back when those first 52 students attended Fruit Jar High. Since it was the 50 year anniversary, me and my friend Badu actually got the opportunity to talk to some people uh, who were there throughout the school's history. Uh, teachers, students, whatnot. Some of them were there when the school first opened, some of them went to school at Fruit Jar High and were there during the transition over to Bria Community. Pretty interesting stuff. I would love to introduce you to them. My name is Gwen Griffith. I was a teacher here. And so I was here the first year that the school opened. So that's 50 years now. Well, my name is Lorna Atwater. I was a freshman here the year the school opened. And, uh... The school opened about three weeks late, like into September, because the, the building wasn't ready yet. Very quickly, the fire department, police department, and helpers in town all converged on wherever the storage place was for the furniture. And so they uh, zipped the school into shape. And it was very beautiful. I mean, it was just supported by everyone. And of course, you know, so much was going on in science and space at that time, and that's how it felt. It felt that way to be in a school with no walls and no pattern to follow. Uh, my name is Peg Orwig Craig. I grew up in Berea, went to Knapp Hall and Foundation School, uh, left for a few years, got married. My husband was sent overseas and I was back here for a year. It happened to be the year that they were opening this new school and my mother said go down and see if they need any help. So I was here when the school opened. I was here the night before when we were trying to, without computers, schedule all the high school students into modular scheduling. They had what they called mods. Instead of classes being an hour long, they had the idea that um, some classes would be an would be a 20 minute class. Some classes would be 40 minutes. Some classes would be an hour. Some classes would be an hour and 20 minutes. And I didn't discover until some years later that 
They forgot to tell us that you cannot do modular scheduling efficiently with less than a thousand students and we had something under 500 so no wonder we were having trouble. So we showed up like three weeks into September and they hand us schedules and they have me scheduled for Algebra 2. The only problem with that is I'd never had Algebra 1 and that was just the beginning of the problems that we had when the school opened. The teachers that spent all the money on the building, they had not spent any money teaching the teachers how to teach in this open classroom, and they hadn't ordered all the books that they needed. It was a very chaotic existence. I graduated in three years because uh, I needed out of the chaos. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Andrew Baskin. From 1991 to 1999, I was a member of the Berea Community uh, Board of Education. In fact, I think I was the first African American to be on the board. So during those eight years, we had, a, I guess, a lot of turmoil. Some tough decisions had to be made. We always have to remember in life that you have to crawl before you can walk and before you could have the Berea community that you have now in 2019, we had to go through what occurred in the 1990s in that growing process. I think now, 20 years afterwards, uh, many people will say because of those tough decisions that Berea community is still there. Uh, Charlie Owens, uh, 1999 graduate of uh, Berea, also have uh, prestige and, uh, to be able to come back as a middle school principal, uh, back to my home here in Berea community, uh, middle school, high school. Uh, so I'm really excited about that opportunity that's been presented to me. Played. Uh, uh, baseball, football, basketball, all while at Berea. Been a great experience for me, uh, and, and I'm glad I get to come back and see all, all you guys and know what great experience you guys get to have every day. So. I'm Candace Castle Whitworth. Don Copeland May. Melissa Ballinger Ballard. I just, I loved high school, and I, I, I loved all of it. It was, it was really hard for me when we took the tour around and Going back through there, it was really hard to, you know, we were all saying, oh, that's where this class was and that's where this one was, and, and it, it was, it was sad. And it was just fun, because you, you have more interaction, because you can see everything going on. And we were talking about, you know, we had the open balconies that looked down over, and we, anytime there was a need for it, we could have an impromptu pep rally in five minutes. Cheerleaders go upstairs to the balcony, everybody else gathers down, the, and it was like, it was just the whole, it was just seemed like there was a lot of spirit mm -hmm. in the yeah. school. My name is Susan Stevenson Robinson, and I graduated in 1988. I have a lot of good memories, but probably mainly the big things like homecoming and, and the dances for girls, love that kind of stuff. Um, just the bonds that we've made, just with good friends. We got to go to lunch. Unfortunately, you guys don't get to go to lunch, to, you know, with the school safety stuff. But you know, getting to leave and uh, being a freshman and, and getting into the back of uh, some of those big uh, cars, and I, you know, sometimes we would, you know, the trunk. We get the trunk just to be a part to go get to go to lunch uh, because as a freshman, you either squeeze in wherever you could or you don't get to go anywhere. And, uh, and then as a senior, junior, senior, and a sophomore, getting to take those kids with me, you know, that were younger, uh, and going to lunch with them was, was you know, I kind of, you kind of built those relationships and, and, you know, like a guy like Todd Wilson, Jason Johns, those guys that were younger than me, I took them uh, uh, to lunch with me. And, and so that was always pretty cool. And we actually, we went to school here when you could um, go out for lunch. And um, the superintendent and smoke on that porch. Yeah. We, we didn't do that. No, we, we didn't, didn't, but you could. <laughs> <laughs> You'd have walked through the smoking pit to get in school. Yeah. That's a different concept that's changed that is probably for the better. We went out for lunch every day and Betsy was driving and we got a speeding ticket. Yeah, I remember Right that. up here in front of the school. <laughs> <laughs> because we were coming back from lunch late and we got a speeding. She got, well, I think her dad got her off of it, but we got, <laughs> we got pulled over for Some speeding during lunch. <laughs> And as with any kind of organization, you know, you're, you'd have to change. Um, I know they had to uh, put some walls up. I loved it without the walls. 
definitely the walls being built because it was open when we were there and you could wave at friends across the hall and talk to friends across the hall during class. Well, of course, the walls have changed. Um, it was an open school. Uh, that, again, from Minnesota, where they had these wonderful open school high schools, the concept was terrific. As most people probably said, the biggest difference is going to be the walls. But at the time, the, the program was this football, uh, video, uh, football movie that you guys have probably never heard of. But uh, Joe Kane, and they had this guy in this movie, he would carry a football around a lot because he, you know, he would fumble. And, uh, and, and it kind of followed what the movie, in the movie they knocked the ball out of the player's hands. And, uh, and so one of us knocked the ball out of, out of his hands and it's going down through the hallway. Well, there's, this classroom here had about four football players and this classroom over here had about three football players. Well, we all saw the ball go flying. And so we all converge on it like it's a fumble in the middle of class. We thought it was a great idea. The uh, teachers did not really appreciate and probably did not watch that movie and get, the, uh, get what we were doing. So we got to visit with Mr. Bonder on it about, about hitting the ball out of the guy's hand. So. We were all very active in lots of clubs and sports. and We were also in the student hall. Yes, all three of us. <laughs> we were. Yeah. Yeah. There were like ten of us there. Yeah. Me, it's still in the, case the three of us. And what? Betsy. For what? Student Hall of Fame. I have memories of, of you were certain certain accomplishments. You were student body president. You were drill team. You Field were the leader of the band. Drum major. Drum major. Yeah. You know, people saw you occasionally. Uh, Bill Smallwood. I, I, I taught for 28 and a half years. And I coached, uh, the head coach for 19 years of boys, two of girls. I didn't even know Berea was hardly even a place until I interviewed here. And uh, I have to give a lot of credit to Dr. Watson. She was my, she interviewed me. And she taught me about the uh, importance of being comfortable with silence. Because when she would interview me, I would answer, and then there would be this long, long pause. Just hoping I would stick my foot in my mouth. As a young guy interviewing for his first teaching job, uh, I did stick my foot in my mouth a few times, but apparently not enough to not get the job. Uh, she was a great mentor to me as my first uh, uh, administrator here. I'm sure you've heard of Dr. Watson. She was our principal. Yeah. She's really tough. <laughs> Nobody wanted to get in trouble with her. different feeling than the principals you all have experienced. Yes. She was very prim, proper, straight laced, straight down the line. She wore a dress suit and heels every day. Her hair and makeup were always done, and you addressed her as Dr. As Watson. Dr. Watson. Yeah. She did not have her first name until after you graduated. <laughs> and they called her Doc Betty. <laughs> not to her face. Yeah. <laughs> Probably the most embarrassing moment was uh, we were down at the Coca-Cola factory on, on a uh, chorus trip in, uh, in Atlanta. And uh, for whatever the reason, this kid thought it'd be a great idea to pants me uh, at the Coca-Cola factory in front of everybody, and unfortunately, he just didn't get my shorts. And so uh, that was a pretty embarrassing moment. I chased him around until the security guards told me to stop. So, so uh, yeah, that that was an embarrassing moment in life right there. But, uh, but uh, that that was uh, looking back on it, it's kind of funny at the same time, you know. Yeah. Well, I don't know how many people knew, but I did have to serve detention because I was tardy a lot for first period class, so I got to do a lot of homework in the lunchroom with Mr. Smallwood. As drum major, I had an outfit that I just had special made, and we'd spent a lot of time on it. And evidently, the very first time I did the salute after the opening number, I the, the seam just ripped completely up the side. Afterwards, somebody goes, what happened to your pants? I don't know. To me, the most rewarding part of the job are the relationships you make. Different students I had uh, that maybe had things going against them a little bit, yeah. knowing that I could help be a part of them becoming successful later in life. But I had um, 16 players send me unbelievable texts and five phone calls last night alone. And those are the things that make it all worth it. We were really close to our teachers then, too. I don't know if, it, if it's so much that way now. I mean, Zero. It's still yeah. kind of hard. We can call family. our. I would say it's definitely still that way. Is yeah. it yeah. good? You, you've known these kids since you were in kindergarten, 
And, you know, you can probably name off all the kids that are in your class, you know, and know their faces, which is just an awesome part of, of Berea because you do get to know everybody, you know. Enjoy the time here, get, get to know your, your people and, and enjoy the relationships. Berea students, I think, are still have a lot in common with those that were here at that time. The pride, you, you talk about pirate pride, and I still have that. I'm 80 years old now but I, I feel that and have that. And the focus is upon being happy. Right. Okay. Instead of right now in this world we live in, we focus on the division right then. Presently when I look at Berea community and I think about 50 years and I think about the night and the event, I think about people who are focusing up on the commonality. There are lots of opportunities for learning and don't stop learning. In my opinion, the number one thing that a school needs to do is to teach you how to learn. You, you know, you guys carry around all of the knowledge of the world in your pocket now. What you have to do is learn how to apply that. Speak out, and I hope the teachers encourage this. And if they don't encourage it, still speak out. Um, I, I think uh, I try to create an environment in my classrooms. It's different than coaching. Those guys, they knew what they had to do to be successful. There wasn't as much of a democracy on the basketball court, you know. <laughs> in a classroom where everybody is getting to learn about who they are and who they want to be, you got to let them speak. And you have to learn and you have to understand as a teacher that you're learning from them as much as they're learning from you. As a high school student, don't let anybody curb your free speech. So I don't really want to take up any more time, uh, but I thank you for giving me this opportunity. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you so mm -hmm. much. <laughs> thank you for joining us as we take some time to explore the wonderful school that is Berea Community. This video has been a lot of fun to make. I'm Luke Seals. You can find me online on uh, Instagram, YouTube, and some other places if you look hard enough. And uh, this is Badu Sharma. Hi, I also have an Instagram. Thanks again for watching this video, and here's to another 50 years of Pirate Pride. When I filmed that last bit that you just saw, I had no idea this is where we'd be, obviously. Who did? Um, it's a weird existence. This has been a weird year. I'm glad I got to document it. Uh, the fact that this all happened to land on the 50 year anniversary. It's, uh, it's strange, but um, Berea's always been strange. I know I've said it like a hundred times over the course of this video, but I love Berea. I love the school, I love the town, I love the college, I love everything about it. Uh, so shout out to Berea, Kentucky. I know that I already wrapped up this video in the last clip that you just watched, so uh, you know, hang with me. You can like, comment, subscribe, anything you want. Uh, you don't have to though, that's fine. Just go with me. Uh, all that matters to me is that you have a good day. So do me a favor and do that. I'll see you in another video, maybe, hopefully.